You say you want my love. Hey everyone, welcome back. It's Tara, and today's video is going to be sort of a collective of answering questions about my hair and my skin and stuff like that, how I keep it healthy and how I keep my skin clear and stuff like that, what products that I use, what products I feel helpful and what I think might help you guys in achieving long hair and hopefully healthy glowing clear skin. A quick run through all of that, I've done hair care videos before, I've done skincare videos before, I actually have a like my top five unusual beauty tips. If you do want to watch my top five less heard of or unusual beauty and hair tips I will leave them in the down bar below. I'll leave that video right there for you to watch if you want to go watch it before or after this video. But some of them will be mentioned in this one as well. Stuff that I still continuously do. The main thing you guys wanted to know about recently is my hair. How do I maintain it? Is it real? Stuff like that. Crazy stuff I get asked all the time. And yes, my hair is real. And it's actually looking quite flat today around the roots just because it's like day three hair and when I sleep and stuff it gets a bit flat but um yeah my hair is naturally quite thick and quite voluminous when I get out of the shower and stuff like that and currently it is sitting just below my bust. I got a haircut about a month ago and I got a few inches off it grown out all my layers and the only layers I have are the ones around my face. I just have a few light layers kind of framing my face and um, I usually don't get that but I just felt like getting it the last time I was at the hairdresser so I have a very just slight few around the front of my face but I have no layers at the back at all. If you have coarse and thick hair like I do getting rid of the layers for me was the easiest option. At one stage I had literally layers up to like here on my head I just had so many layers because in my head I thought that layers meant it would be easier to manage but actually I just decided to grow them all out and I finally managed to get the shortest ones down to the end so like I said I have them like nearly up here and I finally grew them out to this length it's a lot more manageable to have my hair all at one length so when I'm at the hairdressers I just ask for a blunt cut as you can see it just makes your hair look really full and kind of like the look you have sometimes when you put extensions in and it just makes it look really healthy and full and thick which is what I like and then my hair is naturally thinner up by the roots and then it gets quite thick near the ends I don't know why that is I guess just from sleeping and stuff my hair looks a bit thinner on the top and plus this is like two or three day hair so it's like usually when I get out of the shower it's pretty voluminous, it's pretty puffy and it's actually a little bit frizzy near the ends. Not because it's dry, it's just the texture of my hair just naturally gets more slightly frizzy at the ends which usually goes away after I sleep on it. Yes it is a plain and boring sort of haircut, yes it's not very styled or anything like that but for me and my lifestyle I'm fairly low maintenance kind of girl when it comes to my hair and makeup on a day to day basis. So having long hair in itself is very hard maintenance and it's even more maintenance if you like to style your hair a lot and stuff like that. I just like leaving it in the natural state and um, it dries pretty straight with a little bit of texture in it like it's not poker straight which I like and um, for me it's very easy to style without heat when all my layers are the same length um, and there's not you know lots of flyaway layers and stuff like that. I can just throw my hair up in a bun, take it down the next morning, it's wavy, I could put it in plaits and again it's a different sort of wave that I can get. For me that's just like the easiest way to style it and I don't have to put a lot of bobby pins in my hair when I tie up my hair. I can just use one or two bobbles and everything is up and out of my face. There are low maintenance but you do want long hair, that's probably the best way to go about it. It's really, when you have long hair it's so easy to do heatless styles just because there's so much of it and it'll just set really well and you don't have to clip in the shorter bits and stuff like that. I do have a little bit of bleach bits left in that are just very subtly in there like browns and stuff but I kind of like that I think it breaks up the black a little bit so I'm not too fussed about those. I just prefer to do it the normal way which is to cut off all my split ends and be really really good to my hair and um, now I haven't owned hair straighteners in a few years just because like I said when my hair is all one length it's very easy to style anyway and I don't feel the need to straighten it. That being said I do want a hair straightener just because I like my hair poker straight sometimes but I've survived fine without the last few years. The only heat I ever use on my hair is my hair dryer um, with the nozzle on it 
and as well I use my curling wand to curl my hair that's the only thing I ever really do to my hair if I do my hair is curl it and I use it on a setting that isn't too high and I probably only do that once or twice a month this is not something that I do every single week or every single day it's like a treat that I have on my hair every now and again really you just need to put away and detach yourself from the heat tools and just have fun and find ways of, um, I don't know, getting used to the own, your own texture of your hair and finding hairstyles that suit your hair rather than trying to force your hair to be something that it's not. Also two things that I honestly couldn't live without when it comes to my hair care routine and it is the Tangle Teaser Hair Comb which is just a plastic comb with a different length bristles and I don't know what, what, what it is about these that makes them so good but honestly compared to when I use my paddle brush this just tears out so much less hair than a paddle brush would because with my long hair my hair gets knotted all the time it gets matted around my neck at the end of the day stuff like that I need to take out the knots gently so this is definitely brilliant it gets like the bulk of the knots out and any ones that it doesn't get out you can use like a stronger brush for that and also when you're brushing if you have a lot of knots hold your hair as you brush that way you're not going to tear out the hair from the root so I find these are definitely worth the money I think they're about 10 10 quid from boots or something um, and then something that I've been using for years and that I swear by and it's the one thing that I just always always buy my shampoos change everything else changed this never changes and if you want to grow out your hair if your hair is damaged already and you're trying to grow it out then I would definitely recommend the Aussie three minute miracle reconstructor I mean this is a firm favorite with a lot of people but I've tried all of them like I've tried the the heat oh what's it the heat resistant one and I've tried the one the luscious long one for long hair but I just think the original the three minute miracle deep reconstructor is the best version and it's, I think it's the original version and out of all of them it's I find it's the strongest it's great at detangling when you're in the shower it gives your ends a really nice deep moisture boost and just always works it, it just every time I can get into the shower with literally dreadlocks and come out and my hair will be a lot more tangle free and much easier to brush out at the end of it and I absolutely love this stuff so I'd highly recommend it if you are just maintaining your hair I usually use this about once a week I wash my hair about twice a week and um, I just anytime it needs a bit of an extra boost I just put it on my ends I don't put it too close to the roots and along kind of the back strands where it gets quite tangly. If your hair is fairly damaged and you're trying to grow it out um, this is what I did anyway it's I didn't want to cut my hair up too short so I got as many dead ends cut off as possible to the length that I wanted so let's just say here got my hair cut to here and then any um, dead ends that were left I just literally moisturized the shite out of my hair like constantly every time I was in the shower I would use a little bit of this on the ends and it doesn't repair your ends but it definitely bonds them together and makes them look a lot more healthy and a lot more shiny and it'll keep them healthy enough until your next haircut so if you don't want your ends to like split any further I would say that this does really really help it keeps them moisturized and from drying out any more than they're already dried out so if you're trying to grow out your hair as well I would make this like I mean it, it's expensive if you have to buy it a lot but even just a little bit every time you're in the shower just keep using it all the time and it'll just keep the ends of your hair moisturized until your next here's a pillow I mentioned I got this one oh, I think I got it at like home store and more or something like that but you can get these off eBay or whatever this is a hundred percent silk pillow well the back of it is cotton but the side that you sleep on is silk and the benefits of this is amazing it promotes good sleep the silk the proteins in the silk sort of are supposed to transfer into your hair and keep your hair nice and healthy and um, it also the silk reduces frizz in your hair which is great like I said when I come out of the shower on the first day of washing my hair my ends are a little bit frizzy I know it just has like a more frizzy texture and it's very like puffy at the ends and I just find that this really calms it down even if I just lie on it for a few minutes or half an hour or so for a little nap 
or to sleep on it overnight it's great it also prevents wrinkles and stuff like that on your cheeks and um, because if you sleep on a regular cotton pillow sometimes you can give yourself um, a wrinkle when you, you're getting a bit older you can sleep and drag your face funny while you sleep and you don't want to cause unnecessary wrinkles you have so many beauty and hair benefits so if there was one thing I would tell you to go invest in or go make yourself it is a Silk pillow, they're really really cheap. Under skin again, and um, for the last few years, I haven't really deterred from my skincare regime too much. If I find something that works, I tend to stick to it, and then other little bits and bobs I tend to change around with whatever comes around. So I have a mix of things today, but I'm going to show you the stuff that I've really been liking at the moment and the stuff that I've been using for a few years now. Um, one of my favorite brands from Boots or the drugstore is the Garnier um, line, the Garnier Skin Naturals line. This entire line that's blue, I absolutely love. I don't think there's one product I don't like from it. Um, I've tried a lot of drugstore and boots skincare ranges. I know a lot of people swear by simple and things like that, but I don't know what it is. I think the Garnier stuff is very good quality for the price that you get. Like for example, I've been using this for years. It's the Garnier Simple Essentials two-in-one makeup remover and it's the biphase one the one with the blue oil in it and the kind of the watery cleanser and this is just really good at taking off waterproof makeup waterproof mascara strong eye makeup things like that and um, it does have oil in it but i find it's exactly the same as the chanel biphase makeup remover that you can get from chanel beauty and um, i should know because I've worked there twice and I'm going back this Christmas. So I just think this is literally the biggest dupe for the Chanel one ever. And like that Chanel one is a cult beauty favorite. So if your skin isn't sensitive to oils and stuff like that, I would definitely recommend that. Um, and I tend to take off, once I've taken off my mascara, I just give the, I put it on a cotton pad by the way, which I use quite often. And then I'll just take off my foundation with it as well, or kind of, um, I don't know, like, water up my face a little bit. Another cotton pad or a wet wipe, I'll just remove any of the excess oil and the rest of the dirt that's on my face. Garnier do do an amazing matching cleanser that goes with this. That is so nice, it's like a soothing cleanser. Again, it's very like the Chanel Hydromax cleanser. I think there's like little dupes, so that goes with this, but I left it down in court. And usually I would always use that to take off the remnants and the oil and the dirt off my face after I use this with another cotton pad. But I left that down in cork and recently I've been feeling fairly lazy. So once I've done the oil step, I use a wee face wipe. And this one is from the Garnier Skin Naturals as well. And it says um, two doses of cleansing milk in one wipe. So these are really moisturizing. I wouldn't normally recommend wipes. I'm not a wipe sort of girl. I think they're a little bit abrasive on the skin but I find these ones really moisturizing and I just keep them in my room to even when I'm not wearing makeup just at the end of the day at night time just to cleanse my face and take any excess oil or natural oil or dirt off my face that might have just plopped itself there during the day so I like to keep some of them handy but I would prefer to use the cleansing milk on a cotton pad because I think it's more gentle on your skin. If you see the cleansing milk that goes with this I'd highly recommend it. Also the blue moisturizer, the Garnier Skin Essentials moisturizer that's in the blue bottle and um, the one for dry skin is amazing and again it's a total dupe for the Hydromax um, moisturizer from Chanel, the one in the tub. The dupe for that and um, feels and smells exactly the same. I went back to my old favourite, which again I've been using for years, it's the Olay Essentials Complete Care Plus Multi Radiance for Normal to Dry Skin Moisturising Cream with SPF 15. This gives the skin, I mean it's not overly moisturising, it's a nice day cream for putting on your makeup on before and stuff, it's not going to absolutely drench your skin which is great and it also has that multi radiance, whatever they put in that is amazing. It just illuminates your skin, gives your skin like a glisten but without it like looking sparkly or shiny or like one of those Rimmel foundations that look horrendously glittery on my face. Um, it just looks, it just gives your skin like a sheen that you can kind of see it, it brightens up the skin and especially I've gone back to using it for winter. Very important to take as best care of your skin as possible from an early age. I, my mum's quite into skincare and when I was about, I would say 12, 13, probably about 13, 
I started using my cleanser, my toner and my moisturizer. I think the earlier you get into that routine, the better. It's really important to do. For me, about a year or two after I started doing that, I decided to cut out the toner because I have dry skin and I don't have huge pores and toning really wasn't doing anything for me except for drying out my skin so if you have dry skin i would just cut out the toning process also if you're one of those people on a night out and you sleep in your makeup don't do that you're pretty much asking for spots you need to keep your skin clear and fresh as much as possible before you go out have your makeup removing tools and apparatus in your bed so that when you're half asleep you can drowsily take off your makeup and even if it's only a half ass attempt and you just use a makeup wipe to take off the rest that's better than nothing and you'll feel you'll wake up so much more fresh face in the morning i don't wear makeup every day but just for the spf properties i do like to put my dr jart bb cream on my face just because the spf 40 is brilliant and also there's just a teensy bit of coverage in it that is just enough to even out my skin tone the barest amount because um, that's really all my skin needs. It doesn't always need foundation and stuff like that. You need to even out a teensy weensy bit of redness in your skin and stuff like that. That is pretty much a synopsis of everything I do to keep my hair and my skin in check. Guys, I really hope you enjoy it and do let me know if you have any products that you recommend me trying or whether you've tried any of the ones that I've mentioned. I would love to know. And of course, like or favourite this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe if you want to see more videos from myself. So I will see you in my next one guys, hope you all had a nice day, peace.